Traditional Chinese medicine, more simply known as TCM, has a history of over 4,000 years, but it's taken until quite recently for the techniques to catch on outside China. Still, these days, combining TCM with Western diagnosis and treatment is growing in popularity around the world. China's 5,000 years of history gave birth to the extensive and profound culture of traditional Chinese medicine. It is seen as one of the most valuable treasures of Chinese civilization. It was said that a man named Yan Di taught people how to cultivate and harvest crops more than 4,000 years ago. He was called Shen Nong, meaning God of Agriculture. Beyond just introducing farming, Yan Di also experimented with all these plants to see whether some of them could cure diseases. This is the origin of traditional Chinese medicine, also called TCM for short. Chinese 以后在这种理论的指导下面呢，再次促进了这个临床的这个发展。Considered the grand master of TCM, Bian Chue made a very special contribution to its development. Living in the fourth century, Bian Chue drew upon all he had learned from his predecessors and created a unique method of medical diagnosis based on four principal techniques. The first is Wang, meaning observing. The second is Wen, which is a bit more complex. The character for Wen actually has two meanings with the same pronunciation, which in English translate into smelling or hearing. And Wen means inquiring. The final technique is called Jie, meaning feeling. Wang is the Wang people's Wang people's eyes, Wang people's appearance, etc. Wen includes hearing, also includes hearing. 那问问病是问病人的痛苦所在，那发病的情由，那等等，那七就是包括七脉，那这是我们中医辨证当中的望闻闻七。Internal medicine had been well developed long before surgery. Since people believed their parents created their bodies, they didn't have the right to damage them. As a result, TCM surgery practices developed very slowly. Perhaps most famous of all early surgeons was Hua Tuo, who lived in the second century. Hua Tuo was not only good at diagnosing and prescribing medicine or acupuncture, he also had a profound understanding of surgery. The famous novel, The Romance of the Three Kingdoms, tells a grand tale of his superb medical skills. One of the heroes in the book, Guan Yu, was wounded in his right arm by a poisoned arrow. The poison quickly seeped in. Soon, Guan could no longer feel his arm and the hero's life was in jeopardy. Hua Tuo made an incision, cut all the way to Guan's bone and scraped away the infection. Soon, Guan Yu recovered from his injury. Acupuncture is another type of TCM with a long history in China. Nobody knows exactly when people began to use acupuncture to release pain. It is said that primitive men found that occasionally using something with a sharp point to stimulate somewhere on your body could help ease pain elsewhere. More than a thousand years ago, a famous man named Wang Weiyi formalized the practice. He made two bronze acupuncture figures for teaching and practicing. From that point on, the technique has flourished into a modern form still widely practiced today. Even today, as Shanghai is rapidly modernizing, more and more people are attracted by TCM. Mr. Hoop is one of them. He likes acupuncture very much. 
Visiting TCM doctors is always part of his busy schedule. We find more and more that uh, the combination of the two types of medicine is very helpful. So we start understanding the advantages of the Chinese medicine. In particular, acupuncture and acupressure is very popular in Europe. And since we're now here for business in Shanghai, I thought we'd take the opportunity to also visit a traditional pharmacy shop and also get some small treatment from the doctor have analyzed what is good and what is not so good with your body and the health. Nowadays, people believe that the combination of Chinese and Western medicine is a good way to cure diseases. But Western medicine triggered a lot of different opinions in the medical field when it was introduced into China in the 19th century. The一种就是他们对西采取全盘否定的态度那么我们认为这也是不可取的因为西它也是一个学科也是一个科学那么第二种呢它是对西采取全盘的肯定这儿全盘否定中医那么我们认为这种也是错误的它是一种民族事务主